welcome to another episode of Headline Canada. Today, we have a very special guest with us who entered politics as a member of parliament with NDP in 2008 and now is serving as Ontario's energy minister with the present Liberal government. He is also representing the riding Sudbury as a member of provincial parliament. We have with us the energy minister, Glenn Thibault. Hi, very warm welcome to PTC Punjabi. Great, thanks for having me. Pleasure. Uh, beginning with Ontario's fair hydro plan, Minister, as per the government, it has saved the residents and the small businesses up to 25% on um, hydro bills. Mm -hmm. But again, the opposition says that the energy, uh, the hydro prices has soared up by 71% between 2008 to 2017. And not only this, the report by the Fraser Institute said that government should not have invested in the clean energy. They say that it is a short-term gain for a long-term pain. So there's, there's a couple of things that I would like to you know, acknowledge in that. So um, first off, yes, we brought forward the Fair Hydro Plan to reduce rates um, for all residences right across the province by 25% on average. And that also includes 500,000 small businesses and farms in that reduction. We also have programs in place to ha help some of our larger businesses and some of our mid-sized businesses as well. And in terms of you know, what the opposition is saying, what the opposition doesn't tell you is that if you go back to 2003, we all remember the rolling brownouts and blackouts that we had here in, in, uh, you know, in our province. And that just shows that the condition that our electricity system was in at that time needed repair. Um, it needed significant repair, so much so that it cost $50 billion to rebuild that entire system. And when we were rebuilding that system, we made the choice of making sure that we eliminated coal. Because when you eliminated coal, um, you make the air quality a lot better. And so by doing so, you know, we've reduced air pollution hospitalizations and air pollution deaths in Toronto specifically, for example, by 20 or 41 and 23 percent respectively. So, you know, we forget often that our system really needed a lot of investment. Um, we, we eliminated coal, which was again the single largest climate change action reduction that's happened in North America. It's like taking seven million cars off of the road and it's also saving us 4.3 billion dollars a year in our healthcare system. And when it comes to the Fraser report, we know this is a conservative think tank. I understand, you know, that you know they come out with these type of reports before, but you know, it was also done by someone who really doesn't believe that climate change exists. Yes. But when we shut down our coal plants, you know, we haven't had a smog day here in the last couple of years. And just recently, we've had the heat wave here at the end of absolutely, September, absolutely. right? Over 40 degrees with the humidity. We we're talking about the heat. We weren't talking about smog. And you know what, when you think about that, when you think about the changes that we've made, that is something that we should all be proud of. So while I understand what you know, the Fraser Institute is doing as a conservative think tank, you know, they really didn't look at all of the facts. They didn't even include the 25% reduction when they were talking about costs. So you know, it's, I always take what the Fraser Institute says with a grain of salt because not all of it was accurate and reflective of what we were doing here in Ontario. Absolutely, but the minister, um, by releasing the net metering uh, plan, government says that it will save on electricity for long term. Mm -hmm. But again, the opposition says that it should be scrapped because it is causing a lot of money. It is costing a lot of money and uh, again, they say that in long term, it is not, not good for long term. Can you tell us um, again, like in detail, what exactly a new meeting plan is? And is it really costing uh, money down the road somewhere? So the net metering program is great for homes and, and small businesses that want to participate. And we've just changed the rules from what used to be called microgrid to um, net metering. And we started changing those rules as of July 1st this year. There'll be a, another little bit of a change in January of 2018 and then the full effect coming in by January of 20, or sorry, July of 2018. But what net metering allows you to do is now put solar panels on your home or your business and actually use the power that you generate to actually help you lower your electricity costs. But at the same yeah. time, using solar power actually helps us reduce GHGs even more. Yeah. So we're now continuing to find ways to fight climate change and at the same time helping small businesses and homes reduce their electricity rates. Because the way it was working before with the microgrid system is you would put solar panels on your roof 
and then any power that you generated would go back into the grid and you would sell it to the grid and then you would get a check at the end of the month but at the same time you would then get a bill at the end of the month so what we're saying is through the net metering program when the full effect comes into place um, you'll be able to actually generate power um, use that during the day if you don't use it all you'll either be able to store it or sell it to the grid and still be connected to the grid for you know uh, evening use because you know we obviously realize the sun doesn't shine in the evening yes. so it's hard to find uh, you know power at night but at the end of the day the net reading net metering program is something that uh, many of our uh, uh, rate payers have asked for and it's something that we're happy to deliver. Talking about the long-term energy plan which the government will release in this fall season, mm -hmm. what exactly it will cover? So I, th I, you know, I think the most important thing for me to talk about in relation to the long-term energy plan is, is fairness and choice and specifically for rate payers. And when I say rate payers, I mean all rate payers. Residential, commercial, so our small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and industrial, so our large rate payers. And, you know, making sure that we, we look at some of the regulations that are in place to allow for some of the change that we know is coming, because the electricity system is evolving. We're not going to just be poles and wires like, uh, you know, we have been for decades. Technology is advancing extremely quickly, and, you know, we need to be able to harness that and take advantage of the technological change that's coming. So, you know, the, the long-term energy plan is going to help guide us uh, where we're going to be for the next 20 years. It's also going to look at, um, you know, costs and with the Fair Hydro plan, we've brought down rates 25%. We're holding them to the cost of inflation for the next four years. So. The long-term energy plan takes all of that and puts that all into a plan so ratepayers and the industry, all of the, you know, um, all ratepayers, um, and even those on the other side of it, the generators and the transmission companies, they'll all be able to know where we see and envision um, our, our province going in terms of the electricity and energy sector, um, you know, for, for years to come. Absolutely. And talking about the Save on Energy plan, one, you said that it has saved the small and the medium-sized companies hundreds of thousands of dollars. But again, the opposition is not ready to accept it. They are opposing it. So that's the one thing that's unfortunate about the opposition is they keep opposing everything that's good for our, our, you know, our ratepayers and for many of these companies. The Save on Energy program is something that we continue to talk about because we want our small businesses, we want our medium-sized businesses, even our residences to talk with their local utilities and find ways that they can serve power. Because when you can serve power, your rates will actually go down. Um, or stay the same depending on what you do. But at the same time, we then don't have to build new generation. Because if we're able to lower um, the consumption province-wide, that means we don't have to build a new nuclear station or a new wind farm or a new solar farm or even open up a new hydroelectric dam. But what we can do is just continue to use our system more efficiently. And so the Save on Energy program is something that we encourage all businesses to actually contact their local utilities to find out if they qualify um, for specific programs within the Save on Energy program. For example, you know, Loblaws, it's the largest largest retail company in, in, uh, in Ontario. Um, they've been able to participate in the Save on Energy program and work uh, with our system operator yeah. to find other programs that they can actually participate in. So they're reducing their rates significantly. In a, in a grocery store in my riding of Sudbury, for example, at a Loblaws, they were able to reduce the, their rates and their consumption by 22%. And so that's a significant savings um, for these grocery stores. I've been to businesses for one, uh, for example, in Brampton called um, uh, Plascoat, it's a, a subsidiary of Magna, and they're able to uh, save, uh, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars. They employ 400 people, um, you know, they sell their products to GM and Ford and uh, Toyota. You know, there's, there's many examples of like that, that we've been working with companies to actually help them reduce the rates even more. And so to all of, you know, your viewers that actually are small business owners, I would encourage them to contact their local utility and find out these programs are available to them and which ones that they can qualify for. Because you know what, when they actually make savings and conserve, we all win. Every rate payer wins because then we don't have to build new generation. 
Absolutely. Uh, Minister, somewhere I think there are people out there who think that uh, this hydro plan came into effect, the 25% reduction, came into effect after NDP uh, released their policy about the hydro prices. Mm -hmm. Do you think this plan will really help competing in the Ontario provincial elections? So when it comes to electricity prices, we've been hearing um, since I've been around as Minister of Energy and even before that, that people were starting to be a little concerned with the price of electricity. Yeah. And so we started to act at that time. You know, we, we renegotiated the Samsung contract. That was, you know, over $3 billion in savings. Uh, you know, we cancelled the LRP2, which was, again, billions of dollars in savings. And so we had many examples of this, of bringing issues or bringing examples forward on how to take costs out of the system. System, but they really weren't um, doing enough for people and so the premier asked me to get back at it and find you know an additional way to to bring more savings and so that's where the fair hydro plan uh, came from is recognizing that we wanted to help as many people as possible right across the province um, with their electricity rates we invested in the system we rebuilt the system we made it clean we made it green we made it reliable and we had to do everything we can to make it as affordable as possible because we are the tip of the spear when yes. you look around um, North America, you know, we have done everything that, uh, you know, every jurisdiction should be doing to help with climate change and to make sure you have a reliable system. And, you know, we've, we've rebuilt our system. We've eliminated coal. And now we've brought forward an affordable system. That is something that I know the people of Ontario had, had wanted and asked for. Yes. And that's stuff that, um, you know, we're going to continue to do as a government. We're going to continue to make, you know, electricity uh, more affordable. We've brought forward our fair housing plan that's actually making housing more affordable, yes. especially here in the GTA, as you would know, um, it gets quite expensive. And so, you know, our plan to actually help, uh, you know, lower costs for housing is extremely important. Yes. We've also, you know, bringing forward um, changes to, uh, you know, the work uh, work plan, what we call it our changing work plan review. Again, helping people, um, you know, with costs. And you know, one of the things I'm, a, you know, proud father I have two daughters and you know they're 14 and 10 um, and you know as as anyone that has a family or if you're a young person you know knowing that you uh, will have uh, free medicine uh, as of uh, January 2018 if you're yes. 25 and under you know all of your medicines will be covered and I think that's important to recognize that it was this government that brought forward all of these plans to make life easier for people in Ontario and we're going to continue to work with our, our federal partner to find other opportunities if it's a national pharmacare program but again we're going to always work hard for the people of Ontario. Absolutely and I think that's one of the great initiative government has taken. We'll uh, definitely continue our chat uh, here mm -hmm. but right after a short break we'll be back soon. Welcome back after the break we have in conversation with us the Energy Minister of Ontario Glenn Thibault. Uh, Minister, uh, recently the new documents obtained by NDP says that the Ontario government is spending about $5.5 million on advertising their hydro price cut plan. Hmm. So we spent about $3.7 million and that, um, that uh, advertising campaign ended in August. But it was extremely important for us to be able to advertise the, uh, the Fair Hydro Plan because the Fair Hydro Plan, yes, it talks about the 25% reduction that every family and 500,000 small businesses and farms are, are qualifying for. But the advertisements also directed everybody to our website, ontario.ca backslash Fair Hydro Plan. And when you go to that website, you can find about all of the programs that are offered um, to all the businesses, to residences, um, and finding out what you can qualify for. There's the Ontario Electricity Support Program, which provides additional rebates on electricity costs for seniors, for those individuals who are low income. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of opportunity for people to find out information on the Triple RP, that's the Rural and Remote Rate Protection Plan. So if you live in Northern Ontario, or if you live in the rural part of our province, that there's also an additional benefit there. I know we talked earlier about the Save on Energy program, yes. but there's information on how you can access the Save on Energy program on this website. And so, for me it was important to uh, make sure that we advertised the, the reductions advertise the website because for example the Ontario Electricity Support Program when we launched it it has the capability and we know that it 
about 500,000 families yeah. in Ontario will qualify for this program. But as of September, we're still at 232,000, which is a significant increase from where we were before this advertising campaign. And for example, just in this month alone, in September, another additional 5,100 families uh, or individuals have signed up for this program. So the advertising campaign is important for us. Government has a responsibility to its citizens to make sure that you give them as much information as possible about the programs and services that are available. And through the advertising campaign, which we directed everyone to go to the website on, really allowed us to get that information out. As we have already discussed about the benefits of the hydro plan, uh, even though it has been a while that the hydro has been sold to the private investors, but I think there are still people who are not ready to accept that it has been sold to private investors. Mm -hmm. So they think that um, you don't buy your home, sorry, you don't sell your home to buy a car. Yeah, so it, it's important to note that um, the first thing, when we sold um, portions of Hydro One, and we still own 40% of it, um, we were making money to invest in infrastructure, to build you know, more you know, light rail, go transit, all of those things that are happening in Toronto, we're actually using that money to help build the infrastructure that we need here in this province because we continue to see growth especially you know from Brampton to Mississauga to Toronto it's growing and growing and so we're taking that money and investing in an infrastructure in this part of the province but in all parts of the province as well in northern Ontario where I'm from you know we're expanding highway 69 making it a four-lane highway so we're using that money to actually build infrastructure and we did that without actually raising taxes now when people are saying they're concerned about the sale of Hydro One, what they were concerned about was the thought of their rates going up. But there is the Ontario Energy Board. That is the entity that is a quasi-judicial, independent regulator, making sure that they monitor all of the rates across the province. So the sale of Hydro One and the increase of rates absolutely have no um, compatibility. You can't you know, increase your rates without the OEB approving that. And the yes. OEB has a history of actually denying um, a lot of these rate increases. So while I understand the concern that people have about the sale of Hydro One, it doesn't reflect on their, their cost to their energy bills, but it has allowed us to build on um, the infrastructure needs of the province. And at the same time, we're still a 40% owner. And we also have a lot of say when it comes to you know the board. We can actually um, be involved in many aspects in the hiring of, uh, of individuals on the board and the, and the the board chair. So you know we have in legislation many, many pieces that still give us a lot of control. And ultimately, with 40%, you still have you know a, a majority say on the board. Absolutely. Apart from the hydro discussion, what are the issues that actually people bring to you from your writing? Because I think you're representing your writing since years. Yeah, so in, in Sudbury, I, I hear a lot about um, healthcare and jobs. I come from uh, you know, a, a community of about 150,000 people, 160,000 yes. people. And um, you know, we are a resource-based economy. Mining and, and, uh, and the mining supply and services sector plays a very critical role for our community. And so right now the mining sector isn't uh, as, as prosperous as we would all like, but you know, we are getting by. So jobs is something that I hear about. Um, and healthcare is something that people always bring uh, some concerns to me. But they're also appreciative of the fact that you know, we've got a PET scanner now that's coming into Sudbury, um, which yeah. is helping with cancer treatment and those yeah. type of things. Um, you know, our, our hospitals are receiving more money. We're seeing growth in that, in that sector. So, you know, we, we do have some good news to tell. Uh, but, you know, that, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we don't have work to do. We always have work to do to make things better and make the lives better for everyone in Ontario. Oh, absolutely. There's always work, a lot yeah, of work. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, what will the government do to lead the fifth straight uh, election victory? You know, I think what we need to do is really start talking more about what we've done over the last couple of years. You know, uh, through the, the work of this Premier and the work Premier Kathleen Wynne, you know, she started talking about how we needed to see better pensions. And so when we didn't have a federal partner in the Conservative government of, you know, Prime Minister Harper at the time, um, she started working on saying, well, we'll create our own enhanced pension plan here in Ontario. Um, but fortunately, she continued to work hard on that. And then we recognized with the new um, Liberal government in, in, in 
Ottawa and of course working with all of our, our counterparts across the, the country, we all agreed that, you know, an enhanced to CPP was something that would benefit everyone. So, you know, that was started by, you know, Premier Wynn and our government. Yes. But then we continue to, to talk about all of these great things that we're doing. And I know we've talked about the Fair Hydro Plan and the 25% reduction. I, you know, as the Minister of Energy, that one that always comes to me first. But again, you know, the, 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 the minimum wage increase, which is actually going to help many, many individuals. Um, you know, the, the OHIP plus, you know, free tuition for yes. a couple of hundred thousand uh, students and families right across the province and an enhanced OSAP to actually help more people get into uh, the post-secondary education uh, facility of their choice because we know that uh, post-secondary education is that great social equalizer that will help that person that graduates get that good job. So. You know, we've continued to do a lot of the heavy lifting. We've continued to make the investments necessary to have, you know, a province that is growing economically. Like we're leading the G7, just yes. Ontario alone, in terms of economic growth and development. And that's because of the programs that we're putting in place, recognizing that if you have a trained, um, you know, workforce, if you have an educated workforce, that, you know, you can actually bring the companies here because they won't have have to go elsewhere to look for an educated workforce and I think another important piece for us is uh, you know our, our immigration policy that we're yes. working with uh, our federal government on and bringing in people here who are contributing to our, our society and contributing to our province and you know that's uh, another fantastic piece for us to be able to say you know we're proud to be able to be an accepting province and an accepting country and and we'll continue to work hard to uh, to do that because we know the benefits that uh, you know our, our newly immigrant integrated Canadians and, and people will bring to, uh, to our workforce and to our society. Absolutely. There are a few things which Ontarians should be really proud of, like G7 and the immigrants policy mm -hmm. we have, absolutely. And we all know that there is uh, 2018, in 2018 we have Ontario provincial elections coming up. So mm -hmm. any, any message for our viewers and why people should vote Liberals again? Um, I think it's um, important for me to be able to tell the, the people of Ontario and especially your viewers that when you're looking at um, what parties have to offer, it truly is, I believe, uh, our party, the Liberal Party, that is bringing forward um, policies and ideas that will actually make life easier for families. So from all of the policies that we've talked about earlier in this, from um, you know cutting electricity rates to you know increasing minimum wage to bringing forward uh, pharmacare for uh, everyone under the age of 25, we are the progressive party that is bringing forward a vision that will actually make a difference in the lives of everyone and actually helping businesses, um, large and small, and families, both large and small, um, right across our great province. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you very much, and it was uh, great having that conversation with you. Thank you. Thanks.